All right, we're going to make the train body, which is the first step of the train project. Uh, we're going to be using Autodesk Inventor. And I want to show you how we open this up for So it's a little yellow icon with an eye in it. And when you click on it, oftentimes it's going to ask you for the licensed server. What that means is we have the software downloaded on the computer, but without the licensed server, it won't open. Now, it didn't ask for me because I've told it before, but if it pops open a black box, and there's an option to put in the license server. You want to click on that and you're going to type in Zula Sung. It's Z U L A S S U N G. When you hit enter, the software should open like what you're seeing on my screen right now. <clears throat> so once you're into Inventor, we're going to go ahead because uh, we're making the train body. So we're going to make a single part. So I'm going to go up and I'm going to click new. And there it is. And we're going to create a standard part. You'll see that there's parts, assemblies, drawing files, and then a fourth one called presentation. But in this case, we're going to make a part. It's just a standard IPT is inventor part file. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And it should open up a blank part file. And I'm going to walk you through the actual creation of the train body. Okay, so the first thing we're going to start with is a sketch. It's a 2D sketch. You will see that there are options for 3D sketch also, if you click in here. We're not going to use 3D sketch at this point. We're going to use the 2D sketch. And it's going to offer you the three standard planes. It's going to be your front plane, your right side plane, and your top plane. For the train body, I usually would design it from this front plane, which is the XY plane. Now, if you choose one of the other planes, it's not a big deal. You can still do that um, because you'll be able to reorient it in the assembly. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. It's going to look directly at it. We're going to start this guy off with a rectangle. I'm going to go ahead and start at this origin point. That's the zero, zero point on my screen. And I'm going to bring up a rectangle. It's going to be a little taller than it is wide. Something like that. And we'll go to dimension. It's going to be really important that our train has a width of two inches uh, because it's going to be sitting on a track. And that track is going to be designed to hold a train that has a width of two. Uh, so we'll hit say two inches for the width. The height is going to be two and a half inches, so 2.5, and you end up with a rectangle that looks like that. All right. Now we're going to take an arc, and I prefer three-point arc. There's different types of arcs you can use. Uh, three-point arc tends to work the best for me. And I'm going to say I want to just start at that corner. It's going to come over to this corner, and I'm going to pull it up just a little bit. Now, if you pull it up too much, it's going to be really big, and we don't want that. We want it to be more of a flat arc. And you'll see, if I were to drop it right there, you can see the little tangent symbols show up. That's telling us that the arc will be tangent into those side edges, which would make it a perfect semicircle. Again, not what we want. We want it to be something like that. And I'm going to go to dimension. And this arc is going to have a radius of 2.24. Right, and so it's just like that. At this point, we're ready to extrude to make the main body of the train. So I'm going to go to 3D model. And when we click on it, one of the options is extrude. We'll click on that. And now we'll get to select that first area and that second area. And it really doesn't matter whether we extrude out or in. Um, we're going to have this little box that shows up right here. Um, and I'm, I'm going to go ahead and have it extrude back. Again, it's not, a, not unimportant. And we're going to have it go five and a half inches, um, like that. And we'll hit OK. All right. Now, we're going to put a new sketch. So I'm going to click right here. And the next face that I click on is where the sketch is going to go. So it's really important I click the right face. I'm going to click on this front face. And it puts the sketch right on that front face. And I'm going to draw a rectangle that is above, farther to the left, and farther to the right of this face. The only one that matters is we need it, the bottom of that rectangle to be above the bottom of the tray. And we're going to put a dimension right there of 0.87. And we'll hit OK. And the reason it doesn't matter how far these are is because we're going to cut. So they just need to be farther than the edges, the top, and the side. So anything like that will work just fine. So we're going to get a 3D model again, and we're going to extrude. But this time, instead of adding material, which is called join, we're actually going to cut material. So we'll say cut. But we're not going to cut at all. 
we're just going to have it cut 3.75. So it's going to cut back 3.75 inches, and we'll hit OK. And we get something that looks like that. Now we're going to take another sketch, and we're going to put it on this front face right here. And I'm going to take a circle, and I'm going to put it right in this middle area. And I don't want to lock it to this line. And sometimes you'll see other lines appear. If you were to click on those, it's going to lock to that. And we'd have to delete some of the constraints to get it where we want it. But we don't necessarily want that. So I'm just going to put a circle right about there. And again, when I'm making the circle, if I were to drop right here, it's going to lock tangent to that line. And I don't want that. So I'm just going to put it something like that. And we're going to do a dimension. I'm going to click on the outside of it and give it a diameter of 1.5 inches. Since the train has a 2-inch width, we're going to do a dimension from its center point over to the outside edge. And we're going to tell that to be 1 inch so that it centers. And I'm going to do one more dimension from that center point to this edge right here. And we're going to tell that to be 0.5 inches. So it's a half an inch above that edge. Okay, And looking at it from an angle, it's going to look something like that. Okay, And we're going to extrude. <clears throat> now, the first thing I always have to do is select your profile. So I'm going to go choose that circle. And if you were to choose the bottom, that's fine. Also, you don't need to because it's going to be inside of material that already exists. But if you really want to, you could. Um, and it automatically put in the 3.75. But let's say I didn't know that. Let's say we didn't know what the distance was supposed to be to get back to this face. We can use this feature called 2. And with 2, you get to select the face. And that's the face that it's going to go to. So I'm just going to choose this face, and it's going to go all the way back to that face. Now, if yours happened to show up as a cut, it's going to look kind of pink like that, and it's going to be attempting to cut that material. It's not what we want. We want that to add material. So we want to change it back to join, and we're going to hit OK. And we end up with something like that. It's starting to look like a little train engine. All right, now we're going to take another sketch. We're going to go ahead and put it on the side of this. Okay, this part we're going to do a little cutout in this area. So the first thing I'm going to do is take a rectangle, and I'm going to put it right about there. And I'm going to take an arc, and I'm going to do a perfect semicircle. So I'm going to click on that edge and the bottom, and I'm going to pull it out until I see the little tangent symbols right there. And that tells me that arc is perfectly tangent into that top edge and the bottom edge. So I'll just lock it right there. And I'm going to give it a couple dimensions. Okay, the first of which, I'm going to tell this line and this edge to be about a quarter inch away from each other, so 0.25. And I'm going to tell that point, make sure you choose the point and not the line, that point and the bottom edge to be 1.75 inches away from each other. So it's going to look like that. Now it's kind of smaller than I want. I actually want it to be bigger than that. So when I go to this, when I see the radius of that arc, I'm going to give the radius a 0.5. So it's a half inch radius. And what that does, because it was locked tangent, this is now exactly an inch apart. I don't even have to dimension it. Okay? And then this edge, it doesn't matter exactly where it is, as long as it's at least here or farther to the right. Because we're going to cut it out. So we don't want it to be to the left. We need it to be to the right. But the dimension doesn't matter. We can now say extrude. And I'm going to zoom in on that guy. I'm going to choose that area and that area. But I don't want to do join because I'm not trying to add material. I'm trying to remove material. So I'm going to say cut. And how far? Well, I do know it's two inches, so I could put in two. Or I can just say through all. And by clicking through all, it's going to cut anything that's in its way. Um, so we'll just hit OK. And now we have a nice little cutout in the back. All right. Now it's time to make the smokestack. So for the smokestack, we're going to go to plane. This allows us to make a work plane. We can put it almost anywhere we want it. And I'm going to click the plus next to origin, because that's going to allow me to use some of the standard planes that are already on this part. Okay? And I'm going to say, I want to use, now that I've clicked plane, I want to use the XZ plane. And I want it to be tangent to this cylinder. And just by panning on top of this, it gives that to me. I'm going to click, and it accepted it. So I now have a plane that is tangent to this cylinder and parallel to the XZ plane. But that's not actually the plane I want. So I'm going to create a new plane. 
And this time I'm going to come down to this corner and you can kind of see that little yellow circle. When I go to the corner and I click and hold, I can now lift this up. And I'm going to lift it up just one inch. And that's actually what I want. So I'm going to say, okay. Now I have a plane that is actually, I have two planes. I have one that is perfectly tangent to the top of the cylinder and another one that's exactly an inch above it. Okay. Now the first plane was really just used to make the second plane. So we're going to go ahead and just right click on it and turn off its visibility. We don't need to see it anymore. We're going to use this second one. So let's create a sketch. Let's click on that second plane and it's going to allow me to now sketch on it. I'm going to make a circle. And again, be careful. You don't want to lock any of this existing geometry, at least in the center of event too. And I'm going to put a circle right about there. And I'm going to go ahead and give it a diameter of, let's just go with one inch. This is a nice clean number. And we want to make sure it's perfectly centered. So we know the width of the train was two inches. So the distance from the center point to this outside edge of the train should be one inch. And we need it to have a distance from the front of the train. So I'm going to click the center point of the circle and the front of the train. And we're going to make it 0.87 again, like we did before on one of the other dimensions. Okay, just to give you an idea of what we're doing here. So we now have a circle that is elevated an inch above uh, the train right here. And at this point, we can go ahead and say extrude. And we're going to extrude that circle. Now, it's offering to extrude it up for us. Well, we don't actually want to go up. We want to go down. Okay, and that, that doesn't look exactly like I want. What I want is it to taper in. So you'll see that there's taper down here right, in advanced properties. And let's put in an angle of 15 degrees, and it tapered and got bigger. Well, I didn't really want it to get bigger. I wanted it to get smaller. So we're going to flip that direction, and it looks something like that. Okay. Uh, but if you look, by coming down an inch, it doesn't quite actually merge because this was an inch. We were designing from an inch above. So we need to not go down just an inch. We're going to say, go to next. Oh, I didn't want to do that. Okay, well, instead of just doing that, let's um, let's put in 1.5, and then it'll be plenty. You will see it actually goes farther down into that, which is fine. It's, um, it's not an issue at all. So we'll go ahead and do it that way, and we'll hit OK. And so we now have a smokestack that has a 15-degree taper on it. Okay, and again, at this point, we don't need this work plane, so we're not going to delete it because we used it. We're just going to turn off its visibility. So I, I right-clicked on it, and we'll turn off the visibility. Okay, and now we're going to put a sketch on this smokestack because I'm going to do another extrusion here. But before I can, I need to activate this circle. So we're going to use this uh, little tool called Project Geometry. You'll click on it. You'll come, and you're going to select the circle of the smokestack. Okay. And so that activated this circle. So we can now go to 3D model, extrude. We're going to extrude it up, but this time we're only going to go about a quarter of an inch like that. And we're going to put another taper on it, maybe a 15 degree taper again, but instead of getting bigger, we're going to flip it so it's actually getting smaller. All right. And we get a little nice little smokestack looking thing just like that. All right, we have one more step for this train engine. Uh, it's the holes. It's the holes that the wheels and the axle pins will fit into. So we're going to go ahead and throw one more sketch on the side. And we're going to use this little tool called point, or center point. And I'm just going to throw one on there and throw one on there. I intentionally kind of didn't put them right where they go because I'm going to dimension them into the perfect spot. So we know this guy is going to be one inch away from the front. And this guy will be one inch away from the back. And this one will be a half an inch above the bottom, and this one will be a half an inch above the bottom also. Okay, those are our two points that we're going to be using to make the holes in the train body. Now that we have them both there, I can go to 3D model, and you're probably thinking, oh, we're going to extrude again. We're not going to extrude. We're going to use what's called hole. It's a hole feature. It's how you make holes. Um, and there's lots of things you can do with holes. You can add threads to them. You can make them countersunk or counter bore, which you guys will learn about, but not, not right now. What we're going to do here is just a simple hole, which means it doesn't have any threads on it, and uh, it doesn't have any kind of a counter bore or counter sink 
Okay. It defaults to a quarter inch in diameter, which is fine. We don't need to change that because a quarter inch is what we want. And you'll see that it's going to go all the way through, which is good. That's what we wanted also. So we'll hit OK. And now we have our holes right where we wanted them. And that is the train body. The only Oh, you know what we need to do? We need to fillet it. Fillet, um, it's not functional. It just makes it look nice. So I'm going to click on fillet right here. And it, it rounds the edges. Um, it's similar to what's called a chamfer. But a chamfer is a slant cut versus a fillet, which is a round. And we're going to run a fillet this time. So we'll click fillet. And we'll use a feature called loop which is right here, because we don't necessarily want to select every edge, but we want to get almost every edge, and I'll show you that. So by choosing loop, it's going to, as I pan around, it's going to give me entire loops of edges that I can select, and it saves me a little time. You are going to go select every edge on the train body with the exception of the holes. We do not want to fill up the holes because we're going to be attaching uh, wheels and pegs to them. And by having it in filleted would make it more difficult. So I'm just panning around to see if anything else highlights. I think I got all the edges. And it defaulted to an eighth of an inch, which is 0.125. Um, and it selected 37 edges. So if I hit OK, you're going to see that it now rounded off all of those edges, except for the holes, because I didn't select those. If for some reason it doesn't look right, you can always come to the right of your screen. And you could right click and delete the fillet and redo it. Um, but mine looks pretty good. At this point, I'd say let's just go change the material to something we like um, because gray would be kind of boring if all your parts were gray. And so you want to have some contrast in your parts. So whatever you choose, you can do whatever you want. It could be, um, oh, I just happened to be on the fillet. That actually looks kind of fun. Um, so I had the fillet selected, so it, it just colored just the fillets. Um, but you would want to color your train, color your fillets if you want to do it that way. That actually looks really nice, so I'm going to leave it like that. Um, and when you're done, you're going to want to make sure you save it to the appropriate spot, which for you guys will be your Google Drive. So you just click on File. You'll go to Save As. And then make sure you navigate to your Google Drive, create a new folder called the Train Project, and save the train body in there. And you're done with Step 1.